It's the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. This episode is brought to you by HP+. In a world full of smart devices, isn't it about time your printer got smart too? Now printing is smart with HP+. And the HP Smart app is how it all happens. You can print from your phone with just a tap, no matter where you are, even from your garage slash home office slash yoga studio. Huh, that is smart. HP+. Learn more about smart printing at hp.com slash smart. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Locked on Lakers for Friday. Brian Kamenetsky and Andy Kamenetsky. Uh, the Jared Dudley thing, Andy, seems to have gotten people a little fired up. Um, not coming back. Should the Lakers have held on to duds? We'll talk about that. And we'll uh, open up our series on Lakers what ifs. Big uh, sliding doors moments for the Lakers. And we'll start with what if the Lakers had actually traded Andrew Bynum for Jason Kidd in 2007. All that coming up on Locked on Lakers next. You are Locked On Lakers, your daily Los Angeles Lakers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, so Andy, we talked, I don't even remember anymore, time is kind of still kind of meaningless. I think it was last week about, you know, Jared Dudley when the Lakers were uh, working out different guys. It was reported that Dudley, I think by Mark Stein, probably wouldn't be back based on uh, who the Lakers were working out and the idea that they wanted to keep a roster spot open. This week we learned uh, that Dudley was going to go with Jason Kidd, abruptly retired, and join Jason Kidd's staff in Dallas as an assistant coach. Um, so not terribly surprising uh, that he ended up not staying with the Lakers. The writing appeared to be on the wall, uh, but we really haven't had a chance to talk much about what it means for Dudley to be gone. And Lakers fans, many of them, have been surprisingly, I think, a lot of them kind of upset by it. Um, Bill Plaschke at the LA Times wrote a column uh, that came out on Thursday, correct? That was yes. kind of really took the Lakers to task for not bringing Dudley back. Um, are you at all surprised at, first of all, the, at their, just the reaction to Dudley leaving? Um, I, I mean, I, I have personally not seen quite as much, um, despair a, as you may have not saying it hasn't happened. I'm just saying it hasn't personally run across the timeline when I happen to have been monitoring it. I did read Bill's piece. Um, I under I understand where Bill is coming from, from a very non-specific 5,000 foot view of the situation. Like, what he is talking about in terms of the leadership qualities that Dudley brought to this team, they're real. I mean, even though Correct. he even though he did not play a ton during the championship year and barely played at all and wasn't even available for a lot of that second year, his presence in the locker room did matter. That being said, though, when you, when you look at the composition of this roster and, and the collective age and – you know, also the leadership that really should be there, you know, between LeBron and AD and Westbrook and Carmelo Anthony and Trevor Ariza and a bunch of other guys that you brought in in part because they're so experienced. You know, I'm not saying that there's nothing to replace in Dudley's absence because, you know, this is all part of chemistry and vibe and relationships, that sort of stuff. And again, Dudley's great at it. It should not be at this point this mandatory that he be there. Mm -hmm. It just shouldn't. If it is, something is actually wrong with this team. Something that something to the something so large that Jared Dudley probably wouldn't be. Well, able to I mean, fix you it. start wondering actually, was the chemistry in 2020 that we saw just like incredible acting by everybody involved or an incredible narrative? that everybody managed to generate and then people like us observed and brought right, into. If, if it was only held together by Jared Dudley. Like, it, like to, if you haven't had a chance to read Bill's column, I, I recommend it. And look, Andy and I love Bill. And you oh, know, yeah. as, as a human, he's one of the best human beings working in this in this industry. Um, I disagree with his columns a lot, and I disagree with this one, but he, he really does categorize it as a really major blow to the Lakers' title chances. And 
I can see here's where I can see the argument. And, and you know, he makes it very clear Dudley is on the record in this column telling Bill, like, I wanted to come back. I made it clear I would come back. I said I would come back on a non-guaranteed contract. It was very clear the Lakers just didn't value what Dudley would bring because essentially he would be a player coach. Um, you know, and because he's not gonna play. Right. Um, and I think the Lakers obviously want to keep a roster spot open got you know there was the the talk about Rajon Rondo on Thursday eventually could get bought out could he end up someone is going to take that spot um they are going to fill two other spots with useful players or potentially useful players at some point before the season begins so you know you'd be using up a spot at least nominally on Dudley who'd either have to cut later on or whatever this wasn't a money thing and so then they're you know worried about the luxury tax implications of paying jared dudley i don't know i don't i don't see it as that they just didn't value i mean it's not a great i mean in terms of luxury tax money it's not a great use no, of because money, it costs, is it three or four million bucks but it's for it's but it's that i don't think that was right. the 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 major driving force probably was a factor like are we really is he worth four or five million dollars whatever the number would have been and they decided no um, and they, I don't, they didn't have space on the coaching staff, certainly not a front row seat. You know, he's going to be on the front, right. you know, on, on the bench. His Jason position did. in Dallas is better than anything the Lakers could have offered. I, sp- I suppose there's an area where maybe they could have outbid made Dallas. accommodations. Right. But like that's to- a big deal. Like that's a thing like the, 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 right. these coaching hierarchies and the, the Lakers have an established staff and yeah. kind of foisting someone on Frank Vogel's staff in that type of position. Um, but that said, look, I have zero. I, I don't doesn't appear that the Lakers even offered him a lesser coaching job. They just said it's OK if Jared Dudley's not here. I understand if you're talking about the Lakers and their title chances as like the things that impact the margins, um, you know, the the two percent, the three percent, whatever it is that Jared Dudley impacts the five percent, whatever that number is, if you can only f- backfill that with the veterans that you talk about and you're leaving something behind that could have an impact. Like you said, it's not meaningless that Dudley is gone, but man, I, I, I just, I, what are these other guys for? You know, right. what is LeBron for? What is uh, Trevor Ariza for? What is Carmelo? Who is a fantastic locker room guy. And can really be a bridge between stars and role players now doing what he does. What is he for? Yeah. Um, I'm like, I, I, I just feel like at this point, again, not to discount what Dudley brought to the team because it was real. If at this point, Jared Dudley serves as a binky for this team or like, you know, the, the equivalent of, you know, a comfort animal or whatever, like <laughs> something's wrong. I mean, and again, I'm not, I'm not saying this to be snide toward Dudley. I'm just saying like, it's, it, no, and you then, have look, to and be able to move past this. It's yeah. worth pointing out. It's also worth pointing out. Every other contending team had the opportunity to sign Dudley if the Lakers weren't going to. Right. It's like if, I've you know, seen, and none I've of seen them compar- did. Yeah, I've seen comparisons to like what the Heat have done with Udonis Haslam, and a Udonis Haslam means more to that organization than Jared Dudley ever will. Like they G- literally owe Udonis yes. Haslam. Like, like Udonis, Udonis Haslam is going to have his number retired by that organization when it's all said and done. He is someone that is literally of Miami. Like, mm-hmm. I, I doubt that guy has paid for anything in that city in, like, a decade plus. Like, Jared Dudley just doesn't compare to that. And you, you these other guys, if there's something Dudley did that for whatever reason takes them out of their comfort zone, those guys are just going to have to step up because that's part of being a professional. Yeah. What, I, what It was interesting, though, Brian, seeing – LeBron's reaction. Let's talk about that because I, I there are two things that I think are, are interesting. The first one is how LeBron reacted and what that kind of means about Dudley and, and whether or not it matters. And then the other thing, I think there's, there's a larger conversation here that Bill, I think, was kind of getting to um, in his column about how we look at the tangibles versus the intangibles, particularly in basketball now, uh, that is so analytics-driven. So we'll do that next. Locked on Lakers brought to you by Bet Online is always the number one spot for all the pro and college football action this season. Get all the updated odds, props, contests, including online's biggest 
$1.5 million NFL Mega Contest and the world's largest $200,000 NFL Survivor Contest open now at Bet Online. Head to the website, use your mobile device, sign up today, receive your 100% welcome bonus. Be sure to take advantage of their opening day super promo on Thursday, September 9th, the NFL season opener against the defending Super Bowl champion Tampa Bay Buccaneers with Tom Brady and Dak Prescott and the Dallas Cowboys. If you lose, your wager will be refunded up to 25 bucks for new customers only when signing up and using the promo code NFL100. Bet online, the fastest, easiest way to bet on all of your favorite sports from football, basketball, boxing, right to your favorite Vegas casino games. Don't wait to take advantage of all the great offers for the 2021 season. Bet online, your online sportsbook experts. Use the promo code Locked On. David Harrison here, the Locked on Washington football team podcast, celebrating with you a 21 grain salute to a less boring sandwich. Thanks to Dave's killer bread. I don't know about you guys, but when I eat pizza, I eat it for the toppings, not the crust. And when I eat a sandwich, it's for what's inside the bread, not for the bread. But when I throw a sandwich on 21 whole grains and seeds, thin sliced bread from Dave's killer bread, it is the epitome of addition by subtraction. That thin sliced bread lets me focus on what's inside the sandwich, but also adds to the sandwich with killer taste, killer texture, killer nutrition, a subtle sweetness, and a seed coated crust. Dave's killer bread is America's number one organic bread for a reason it tastes so stinking good dave's killer bread is made with the highest quality organic and non-gmo ingredients and is power packed with whole grains fiber and protein visit daveskillerbread.com to learn more and look for dave's killer bread in the bread aisle of your local grocery store so lebron uh when the dudley news broke that he was going with jay kidd to dallas he was uh, appreciative of Dudley's time and and seemed a little irritated by it. He was yes, sad. He, he was he, legit sad. He tweeted out, um, congrats to my guy. If this is true, it probably is, but face slapping emoji, man, F-bomb, 10 screaming man emojis, which I think was intentional and a nice tribute to Jared Dudley who wore number 10. Then the next tweet, excuse my language, but this one still, this still one hurt. For many reasons, you wouldn't understand than five face-slapping emojis. Then he sent out another tweet with an asterisk and this correcting his own typo. We've discussed lately, uh, LeBron does not like typos no. in his tweets, which I respect no, as a writer. I, I, you, you fire stuff off and you look at it and you're like, no, I'm better than that. And yeah. you know, the guy runs a school, for God's sakes. Um, and he's so a, He's a media mogul. I will say this. I don't know how deeply the Lakers consulted LeBron on this move. I mean, LeBron has gone out of his way to try to make it clear, I am not the general manager of the LA Lakers. I think we'd all be delusional <laughs> if we didn't think that LeBron... goes out of his way to undercut that, but go right. on. I mean, that's what I was about to say. Like, <laughs> It's pretty clear he gets a vote, but, you know, I mean... Jared Dudley at the minimum, even with the luxury tax implications, if LeBron drew a line in the sand and said, look, dudes rob kurt you got to bring him back like i i it's i i it is going to make me upset like really genuinely upset like you were doing real damage to this team if you don't bring him back i think they'd have found a way to bring him back even if it meant that jared dudley would be co-starring in space jam 2 like you know space you know new legacy 2 um next to dame lillard who's gonna to space two jam right exactly he didn't do that, which is fine. I'm not advocating that he should have, but like, again, it's, 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 it's both reflective of the importance of Jared Dudley and how much he genuinely meant to these guys. They loved him. Media loved him. Coaching staff loved him. Everybody loves Jared Dudley. He's very good at being loved, but it's also reflective of the idea that you said before. I think that it's like, okay, but we can move on. Like I can be happy for the guy. We'll be okay. Or, or. Maybe this was, in their minds, the Lakers exercising power over LeBron, like saying, look, you may think you run the joint just because we gave KCP a balloon payment a year before you arrived as a means of maintaining legal daily contact with Rich Paul, your agent, and then we traded the entire team to get Anthony Davis, who you were on record as wanting. Then we got Russell Westbrook, who you wanted, and traded half the team to get him, even though he's not a natural fit. And we one year brought in J.R. Smith, despite him being super washed. And we brought in Jason Kidd as the obligatory assistant coach, despite being totally uncomfortable with his past. Then we brought in David Fisdale, who's totally your guy, 
who to replace Jason Kidd, who's totally your guy. But lest you think you're running this joint, dude, we did not bring in Jared Dudley, <laughs> so-called king. I, I see you had thought about this, but this yes. potential possibility yes. Yes. as a talking point mm -hmm. um, that, that, well, that wasn't entirely off the top of your head. No. Um, but it's, I'm not saying you can't get away with one roster spot where you have a guy who isn't going to play, but particularly if you want to keep one open, which I think is smart, um, you don't necessarily, you got to be careful. And I think that you really do want to fill it up with as many useful, potentially useful rotation players as you can or guys that can that can play in a pinch i just don't think duds is that guy um no. all right anyway uh the what if game andy has become kind of the uh the big rage uh over the in the off season carmelo anthony um commented on it it, it might have even been a week or two ago uh the possibility of like what if carmelo anthony had stayed in detroit like actually been drafted in detroit instead of them taking darko yeah like he was Matt talking about that on the career. all the smoke podcast right all the smoke guys um so we put it out to people um at cam brothers on twitter uh you can also send us some stuff at uh kamineski brothers gmail.com of some really fun lakers what ifs and one of the best ones i think that we got right away a few people put this one out was what if the lakers had whether in the you know the trade deadline of 2007 or i guess the summertime of 2007 when kobe was going off what if they actually had traded andrew bynum for jason kidd the downstream effects of this one andy are fascinating yeah i mean they the first thing that came to mind for me was this may have ultimately cost them a shot at Pau Gasol because I don't know if they would have had the necessary stuff later on to make that move because they're almost certainly going to end up moving Andrew Bynum for Jason Kidd. He, he would be the one that the then New Jersey Nets would have wanted the most. And Kwame Brown maybe is thrown in there for to make the money work the same way he ultimately was as an, you know, time expiring the next year with Memphis that you end up getting pow but I wonder if that's considered enough talent mm -hmm. from the Nets's eyes to get Jason Kidd I mean Jason Kidd at that reportedly point, they won he was kid was 34 years old was playing very well yeah so oh point. yeah and reportedly they wanted Odom and right Bynum right um, and the Lakers said no let's just say you end up with Bynum Kwame Jordan Farmer like that ends up getting it done because the Lakers the Lakers wanted to keep Bynum and Odom you're eventually going to have to give up Bynum if you want to make that deal but maybe you're able to hang on to Odom I don't think Lamar Odom as the centerpiece of a deal gets you Pau Gasol because it would have been the exact opposite of what they were looking to do which was get young players and then in the case of Kwame an expiring deal okay Lamar, Lamar was you know, reasonably high price, 13 to $14 million, and you still had a few more years left on his deal. I, I don't know if that's actually appealing to Memphis. Right, but how about this for a sliding doors thing? The Lakers don't get Pau Gasol, but they still end up with a Gasol because they don't trade Mark. And so Mark Gasol ends up as a Laker and developing with the same kind of career arc and career trajectory as the next great Lakers center, which kind of, I mean, because I, I had originally thought of this like, well, okay, so you start going down the street. If you, if you traded Andrew Bynum, how do you end up with Dwight Howard? And like that whole thing that ends up, you know, two or three, what is it, five years, four years down the road, whatever it is. But then it occurred to me, well, wait a minute, they've still got Mark Gasol. And you know who was fat at that point and wasn't that you know wasn't the player turned in, but like it's they still would have ended up theoretically with a great Hall of Fame caliber Gasol. Yeah, but the problem is though, Mark Gasol isn't on the timeline that Kobe needs in order to win those championships. Powell was so much further ahead of Mark at that point that even if, say, Mark Gasol ends up in the NBA at the exact same time, his first year was 2008, 2009, I don't, I don't think he's even close to good enough at that point to play the same type of role that Powell played. 
you know, for, for oh, those back-to-back oh, back yeah, championships. Yeah, you're right. And so there's there's a, a void somewhere in there. If the Jason Kidd Lakers, having given up all that other stuff, aren't good enough and you can't go fill, fill in, then you've got problems. But it does open up an avenue where the Lakers still end up retiring the jersey of a Gasol. That um, is true. That and is. so, and, and which completely changes potentially the Dwight, the whole Dwight era, because you have a center at that point who, who might have some promise um, and what comes after that. But also, um, you know, so, so it, it changes that. And then it's potentially some of the, the dark period that, that comes after it was, it was just something like, you know, that again, the, the impacts there, there's one other thing that became kind of uh, an important part of this whole story to say the very least that is drastically impacted by the Lakers actually pulling the trigger at the deadline in 2007 for Jason Kidd. And we'll talk about that next. Locked on Lakers brought to you by rockauto.com. With the ever-increasing numbers of makes and models out there, it is impossible to stock all the parts you need in a, chain st- in a traditional chain storefront. And why would you spend 30%, 50%, 100% more for the exact same parts at a chain store? Don't do that. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's it's ridiculous. You can get it for way less at rockauto.com. For example, Honda Odyssey fuel pump, 353 bucks from a chain store. It's only 216 at Rock Auto. So come on, man, be smart. They're a family business. They've been serving auto parts customers online for 20 years. Go to rockauto.com right now. See all the parts available for your car, your truck, right locked on in the how did you hear about us box so they know we sent you amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever need, rockauto.com. Locked on Lakers podcast also also brought to you by Built Bar. If you are needing something that's good for you, that's healthy, that tastes good while you're out, you're running your errands, you're taking the kids to school, you're trying to get a workout in like, you know, the original uh, you know, purpose of protein bars, I think that's Built Bar. It's high in protein, but it's low in sugar and calories. And the improved Built Bar, Andy, it's even more delicious than before. They've got 18 flavors. I mean, for God's sakes, you can't find a few that you like. There are 18 of them, including caramel brownie, cookies and cream, cherry barcia. Um, I like that one. Uh, so Built Bar, it can calm your sweet tooth. If you're like me, you like the, the a little bit of, of sweetness, candy type flavors, but you don't want all the sugar. But they are coated in 100% chocolate, and they manage to keep that sugar content down even while it tastes really good. Um, It's soft. It's easy to chew. So go to BuiltBar.com. Use the promo code LOCK15. You get 15% off your next order. Use the promo code LOCK15 for 15% off at BuiltBar.com. One of the most, I think, interesting things just about and I don't even know how this impacts the the on-court product for the Lakers. but it significantly impacts their history. If the Lakers pull a deal, whether it's right at the end of the season or you know after the playoffs are over or actually at the trade deadline that February for Jason Kidd, the parking lot video <laughs> does not exist. Like in theory, like in theory. At the very least, it's very different. It's not him uh, yelling that the Lakers should ship out Andrew Bynum for Jason Kidd. Maybe he's complaining about something else if that season goes down in flames, which, by the way, it might have because I don't know if they'd have been good enough to win. But um, like, It all really depends on whether or not they were able to keep Lamar Odom in that sure, equation. Let's just, if, let's just say let's say they did. The Lakers had a, a competitive playoffs. They, you know, it wasn't Smush Parker and Vlad Rad <laughs> or whatever. Right. It was better than that. Um, you know, Chris Mim. And so, you know, you have a, a team that makes the conference finals, whatever it is. He's not in the parking lot in Orange County yelling at people on, you know, random strangers on on what ends up being a self like a, like the earliest examples of like cell phone videos. Yeah. Um, I don't want to get distracted too much with that. So let's let's because the it seems so quaint now telling the story of what this was like these guys had a video and they put it up on something called youtube.com, but then tried to sell the rest of it. Like they were, they tried to sell it back to the Lakers. So it wouldn't see the light of day. The Lakers were like GTFO. Yeah. They tried Um, to sell it to ESPN. They tried to sell it to the LA times. It kept getting turned down. Uh, Ironically though, apparently a bunch of fans tried to buy it from them right to keep it to, from to being, bury it right and they said no to that right like they, they wouldn't sell it to the fans and um 
Instead, they, the LA Times reported, uh, I think they became known as the Kobe video guys. I yes. remember they, you know what? They, I, if memory They served, went to Pincus. They showed it to Eric Pincus, our friend Eric Pincus, who verified that that was, in fact, Kobe Bryant on the right. video. Well, I remember they reached out to us when we were at the LA Times, not to You're purchase right. it, but they actually reached out to us if we wanted to interview them about this whole thing. And we said, no, <laughs> we, we don't. We have no interest at all. Which we, maybe we should have, but like... It, the idea, like it is, it was, and this was not that long ago, but holy hell, it was a different world back then. Okay, like, to, to put Kobe, like that would have, I mean, that would have obviously gone viral instantly. All these other things, well, but like th there was this whole cloak and dagger thing around it that I found adorable in, you know, looking back on it. Like I said, they, their plan, once they had turned down the fans' opportunity to buy this thing from them, uh, the LA Times reported that they planned to make it public by the end of the week, provided enough money could be raised through web donations, I guess the original GoFundMe, and then they would charge $1.99, I guess, to click on this thing through their website. Like that, that was, that was the plan. That was the plan those back guys then. Are up to now. Um, but anyway, so like that, that summer, the summer of 2007. Bonkers. It was insane. Insane. Like that became like a seminal moment in LA, not just Lakers history, but like that's the radio he's on, you know, uh, you know, every radio station. Then, then it's radio silence and he's posting on, you know, there was the controversy about what was posted on KB24.com. And, Which and I tried to go to today. I actually tried to go to KB24 today. Uh -huh. And briefly, I got what it looked like, if, if memory serves, I tried to take a screenshot. I'll explain what, later why it didn't work. But it looked like it was just a K that was revolving in circles with a snake wrapped around it, <laughs> like a K or a KB right. with a snake wrapped around it. And then I wanted to go back, and it started saying that I needed a password. And I'm, I'm now very concerned that I got fished. Like P-H-I-S-H-E-D. I'm, I'm very, very concerned that all of my data is In related brief. news, I've Brian. got this fantastic opportunity to do a, a, a tragic car accident in Nigeria. Yes. <laughs> but uh, I don't know if those two but things yeah, are it was, uh, th That's what KB24.com was. It, it was like, remember Kobe's first tweet was, yeah, was just him tweeting out, can you hear me now? <laughs> <laughs> right. But it's just, so like this, for people who don't remember, like this was, an, it became part of the mythology of Kobe was not just the like, will he stay, won't he stay, will he force the Lakers hands, whatever. But it became kind of part of the thing that like Kobe forced the Lakers hand here. Like, you know, the, he, he made the Lake, he forced the Lakers into making big moves. They trade for Pau Gasol next year and the rest is history. Reality is the Lakers ignored him. Um, they didn't really do anything. They didn't trade for Powell right away. That came in, you know, in the no, season. The, big, by the, the time, biggest move they made was bringing in Derek Fisher, who became mm -hmm. unexpectedly available. Right. Like that was really the big move they made in the moment with Kobe's trade demands was and, just and, bringing what? in fish and saying, we're not going to trade you trust us. You know, I mean, he, there were some discussions. I know like there was a possibility of moving into Detroit, you know, it became complicated because even if the Lakers had wanted to trade Kobe, which they didn't, he had this no trade clause, which meant essentially any other team was negotiating with the Lakers and Kobe Right, which Kobe, who wanted the best possible team right. around him, and the Lakers, who wanted the most stuff back, and I just it, what what happens to this piece of Lakers history, and like you know, would it have been a smooth sail through then, and then you come back with Jason Kidd, and like like that that summer had a massive impact on the way that people thought about Kobe. Oh, the way yeah. people looked at him and all that kind of stuff. And it became really important. And like it all ended up ironing out. And the late people forget the Lakers were in first place when they made the, the Gasol trade because Bynum was playing part in part because Bynum was playing so well and had made such a good jump between 0607 and 0708. But to erase that moment from Lakers history, that's kind of crazy. What replaces it? Yeah. I mean, it, it, I remember. The first game back for the 2007 2008 season, yes. Kobe got booed in his yes, introductions pr pretty, pretty ferociously. And, you know, in typical Kobe fashion, he ended up 
you know, his ass cheered off by the end of the really well. And, you know, Kobe could right, Lakers, always, I mean, Lakers fans weren't turning on him forever. Like, no, they, you know, I, they, they were, they were making a point and then never stay mad at that dude. It was no. impossible. Um, but I, okay. Great story. I remember this. Um, there had been all this talk. Remember that Kobe wasn't going to show up to oh, training. Camp. Right. Uh, yes. Rick, Rick Buecher, I believe it was at the time reported that Kobe was willing to sit out the entire season if he wanted. He would never wear a, a Laker uniform again. And there was semi to Pluto, all that right, stuff. Right. Uh, but there were legitimate questions and like legitimate wondering is Kobe going to be here? And when training camp opened and all the players, you know, came out from the back, everybody was out except Kobe. And I remember talking with Kwame Brown, and you know, I'm just catching up with him. Both of us really liked Kwame a lot, you know, his issues on the court, notwithstanding great guy. And I'm talking with Kwame and, you know, the subject of Kobe comes up and Kwame asks me, do you know if he's here? Like, do you know if he's coming? I'm like, I don't know, dude, I'm not on the team. <laughs> like, I mean, it, did you bump into him in the lot? You were just back there. I mean, but like, it speaks to just how much of an actual mystery yes. and how much concern there really was. Kwame was on the team asking me if I knew if Kobe was going to be at media day. Like that's yeah. how big a thing this turned into. Yeah. So I mean, the this this chunk of Lakers history potentially disappears. Who knows? Who knows if Pau Gasol ever arrives? How good a, a Jason Kidd Kobe Bryant team would have been? I, I don't know. It's been interesting. Kidd was good at that point. He wasn't quite you know at his at his peak, obviously, but he's still, still pretty, pretty good. good <laughs> how you rebuild? Like, do you eventually end up somehow rebuilding around? Kobe and the other Gasol. So it was a great one to start with. Um, the next two, one. Wait, that, two, really quick. Oh, two, we're not. Okay, two, go ahead. Two quick things that I just wanted to bring up uh, before we go. A, the idea of seeing Kobe with that type of point guard in Jason Kidd would have been fascinating in and of itself. Oh, yeah. Like the idea of Kobe playing with that type of floor general, that type of distributor. Yeah. Would have been really interesting. The Remember other how he thing, played though, off ball with Ramon Sessions? <laughs> oh, yeah. That, that was an amazing three hours. It would have been um, interesting. The other thing, though, I, I found an old ESPN article, l- largely made up, I think, through like wire services or whatever, mm-hmm. but they were. it was an article about the uh, parking lot rant. And it said, quote, Bryant has a no trade clause in his contract, meaning he would have a say in anywhere he goes. If the Lakers ultimately make such a decision, mm-hmm. several messages left for Bryant's agent, Rob Palinka, haven't been returned. Palinka told ESPN.com late last week that his client's position, quote, remains unchanged. Kobe would like to be moved. Bryant, who turns 29 in August, has four years remaining on his contract worth $88.6 million, although he can terminate the deal in two years. In the... If you want a big difference between now and then in the new NBA of player empowerment, two years left on a deal would have been a five alarm fire. It would have been you have to move Kobe now. He only has two has years, two years left. left in his deal. Yeah, I, it, it, the world is very different. It's not that long ago, but the world is very different. Um, the yeah. next one we're going to get into. This is another one that was sent to us by a few people um, and is opens up all kinds of doors, including stuff. Uh, related, obviously, to Kobe Bryant. What if the Lakers hadn't traded Eddie Jones? Big deal to a lot of Laker fans. So that's the Still. next what if we're going to do. Keep sending them in at Cam, uh, at Cam Brothers on Twitter, Brothers at gmail.com. Leave them on the show page on iTunes, uh, as well as a five-star review. And that you know your what if has a better chance of being used on the show. Um, coming up on Monday... Great show planned with Michael Pina of uh, Sports Illustrated. He's written some fantastic stuff about what's been going on this offseason, first of all with the Lakers, but then the Western Conference and the rest of the NBA more broadly. Great guy, great guest. Uh, so that's something to look forward to on Monday. Uh, make sure you're subscribed to Locked on Lakers on YouTube. Everybody have a great weekend. I'm Sosa Tremendous, your host of the Locked on Rams podcast, a daily podcast covering your favorite team. If you're looking for the best data-driven analysis, X's and O's breakdowns, roster management talk, free agency rumors, and everything in between, come hang out with me daily as we break down your Los Angeles Rams in depth five days a week. Listen to the Locked on Rams podcast every day on the Odyssey app or wherever you get your podcasts.